Welcome back to Giza Stockfile Insights. This week, we look at Stockfile Group Constitutions, where the Buffalo City Progressive Lady Stockfile shared their struggles when it comes to administration, documentation, and choosing leadership. Now, we are just going to look at the structures or processes involved when having to conduct meetings. Ndatema uh, Surubele, I think Mams Nazo mentioned that there's just chaos when it comes to chairing meetings or trying to have meetings. I think technology is part of the problem there. But just before we get to that, how often should a Stockfile group have a meeting? I think generally Stockfiles have a meeting once a month. But the, the answer should be that you should have meetings as regularly as required. So, so sometimes there's a need for a meeting to happen to appraise the different members of something that might have happened. So it might happen that within the month, uh, a member, you know, finds out that something would have happened, there was a withdrawal in the bank or something that affects the group materially would have happened. So for the interests of transparency and making sure that everyone is always aware of what's happening within the group, because it's owned collectively, uh, it's then important not to restrict it to once a month. Even though you have it once a month, but let's make provision for having meetings as and when required, depending on the circumstance that might arise. Wouldn't the size of the stock file group be a determining factor as well? It does. It does. Uh, however, it's not the only consideration. So you might find that if you've got fewer members, then the need for, you know, the ad hoc meetings uh, mid-month le become less necessary. So the less members you have, the less the need. Uh, uh, for having those ad hoc meetings, precisely because there might not be a lot of activity that happens. But in bigger groups where there's a lot of activity, there are a lot of moving parts, uh, people are responsible for different things. Uh, Taking the event of a, of a burial society, uh, there's a death within the burial society, it's on the 18th of the month, you know, you're not going to necessarily wait until the 30th of the month to talk about a funeral that would have passed. So. In that event, you then have to call a meeting to iron out uh, how you're going to move forward. And then again, you're going to be guided by your constitution and just making sure that you do the things that were set out in the constitution that you do. Now, with this particular stock file group, you know, the members are in between Gauteng and Limpopo, and they do have challenges, um, you know, when, with communication and hosting meetings as well. How do they overcome that? Um, you know, the older generation mm -hmm. are a bit, I don't <laughs> want to say slow, Relax. but yes. Mm -hmm. So how do they overcome this? Look, I think it's a function of training. Uh, and, and I think what really needs to happen is that they need to bring people along. So as you correctly say, you know, with older generations, people are very, uh, they don't trust technology as, as they should. Uh, but it's important to bring people along to show them the importance of, you know, uh, integrating technology into their workings. Because there are some positives. There might be negatives, yes, with technology, but there definitely are positives, you know. Uh, and the positives are that even though, and for instance, with this particular group, some members are, you know, members are in different provinces. So ordinarily, without technology, it would mean that they can't meet as regularly as they should because of those logistical constraints. But given the advent of technology, meeting regularly is something that becomes very possible. So they then have to consider what are the different technological instruments that they can use. What are they? Aside from WhatsApp, because WhatsApp video calls, yes, but you can't really Networks. record mm. the entire conversation or network as well. Yeah. So you could have, you know, a meeting is a meeting. So a lot of people, depending on their access to teams, and again, there's no blanket approach. So you have different levels of groups. So if it's a younger generation, if you have people who are, you know, familiar with like your platforms, like your teams, Zoom and so on, that obviously makes it a lot more easy and people are more open. In fact, we've seen groups of people living in the same province, same city, same street, preferring to have their meetings online, as was the trend during the COVID years. But as you correctly point out, with the older generation, it's a bit more difficult. So one of the things to do is to take people through the different aspects. Now, you've mentioned that some of them, you know, you can't record. You then have to rely on a strong secretary. So you might have a conference call, 
you know, depending on the number of members. You then, you know, because there's no one size fits all for all of the groups, you then look at what are the circumstances in your group. So what might happen is that the group constitution can allow for proxy representation at a meeting. So someone's daughter can represent their mother at the meeting. That then allows for technology to play a part. But you then again, you look at the conditions and circumstances of that particular stock file to say, does your constitution allow, you know, are the members all of the same age? Do they have children or people they can call on who are familiar with technology? How do they then integrate? And that also assists towards the issue of continuity for stock files because older people also realize that things change and they have to keep up with the times. So sometimes the issue of, you know, confidence and just knowing how these things work, but it becomes easier when their own children are taking them through that process and begin to, you know, be part of this growth process and pe people taking advantage of instruments such as, such as technology that are there. I like the term that you use, which is a bit more respectful, which is older people being more reluctant as opposed to me saying slow. <laughs> so apologies for that. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I think what we can take away from, you know, this episode is just the importance of record keeping and taking down minutes as well. Yes. But there's also an element of documentation. Mm. So what are the most important documents that stock file groups need to think of? I think for me, are those documents, I'd start definitely, you know, with minutes and resolutions uh, and financial statements. Because for, for, for me, those are the crux. Not to say the others aren't important, but that's your starting point. And then you can almost work backwards. So, for instance, when you talk about minutes and resolutions, you can work backwards and say, in order to get to minutes, you have to have had an agenda. You had to have had a scribe who's taking those minutes. You had to have approved those minutes. You had to have had have a record of the discussions of the resolutions that were taken. So once you have those documents, you know, your bank statements, your resolutions, and another important document in the event of a burial society would be your policy statements. Uh, and policy statements in the event of a burial society are very important because those essentially iron out the exact benefits that you have so that there's absolute clarity in terms of what you can and can't claim. There are terms and conditions there and it's incumbent on every policy holder and the group secretary to make sure that each member has read, does have first of all the policy statement and two, they fully understand what's contained in that policy, stop, policy statement. So once you have these documents, life becomes easier because let's say, you know, there's a transaction that happens on a bank statement or, and then you have to refer, but we're missing 2,000 rands, you know. So to avoid conflict, you're then able to refer to documents that you have that then explain why that uh, money would have been withdrawn and used for a particular purpose. And again, it augurs well for the administration of the group and the transparency. And all of these different elements that, you know, work towards good administration of the group ultimately help Stockfells grow. So there's no greater marketing, uh, marketing trick, as it were, that will attract members to a group other than people seeing that this is a well-run group and well-run can be defined. You know, this is a group that if you want to know when did they decide to increase their premium and why did they decide. So new members coming in also have access to those records so that you don't go over discussions that you've already had and people are able to say, I'm very comfortable in contributing money to this group because I know exactly where it's going, I know where it's kept and I know that it's used for the things that it's supposed to be used. And also making sure that these documents are digitized. Yebo, well. yebo. If your stock fell or burial society needs to know more about this broad topic, please do contact us using the details on the screen below. That's it from me. Until next week, it's goodbye for now. This program was brought to you by Thai Vision Media, helping stock fells and burial societies reach their goals.